how do you think he will handle it if as many fear this comes down to a variation of hanging chads in Florida and the Supreme Court comes into play? How will he handle that? I expect you'll see a Biden, uh, you'll see the Biden campaign and him personally uh, point people towards the law and the law says count every vote that's legal. And we've now gotten to the point where Americans are, I think, they're beginning to recognize, in fact, many have already absorbed the idea that this is not necessarily going to have to be over on election night. That's not a that's not what that's not how the process works. What what works is that every every ballot is counted. After, after all, even though Donald Trump rails against mail in ballots, he himself is a mail in ballot voter in Florida. And uh, the process will go on until those are counted. I expect what you'll see is that if it appears, as many expect it might, that uh, Trump could have the illusion of winning on the day of because his voters are more likely to vote in person than by mail. He'll try to uh, announce victory, but that's stagecraft. It does it, It's no more real than him going and pretending that he's built a wall. And it, at a certain point, it's going to be up to the people and uh, to just be patient and wait for the votes to be counted. And I think what you'll see is Biden saying, Count every vote. I'm not going to pretend I've won until the counts until the votes are counted, but I'm certainly not going to take this um, kind of ludicrous gesture of victory from a president who has not yet won re-election as anything worth uh, more than it sounds like. One of the great skills you have as a reporter, Evan, is that you've shown us Biden the man. And there's one particular man you point to, Mohammed Kazaz in Dearborn, Michigan. And you say, every day mm. Biden's aides try to get him on the phone with a regular person. He runs a coffee shop, had tested positive for COVID. Biden got him on the phone. It was a very poignant conversation. How do you explain mm. the fact that many are unable to see the virtues of Joseph Biden, who's able to have that kind of meaningful intervention with people compared to someone who's clearly an unreality star? Mm. You know, it's such an interesting moment. I, I happen to just, like you, I think I found that incredibly interesting and revealing. I happened to get this recording from Mohammed Kazaz in Michigan, who was who recorded his call with the with, with the former vice president because he just thought, "What a, this is not the kind of thing that happens to me very many times in my life." And it's an extraordinary encounter between two people, and it's really two fathers and two American citizens and two people in the midst of this COVID crisis, just trying to get through it by providing one another what help they can. And in this case, Biden said to him. You know, I have been through some tough times in my life in which my children couldn't really understand what was happening. And here's some of the things I did that helped me. And I talked to Mohammed Kazaz about it. And he said, I can't tell you how much that helped me in that moment, how much that really mattered. And I, I think I think all of us are we're sure all tempted by the kind of um you know, car wreck quality of Trump's politics. You just can't take your eyes off of it. And yet at the same time, Look at us. I mean, here we are as a country. We are just infinitely weaker and less safe and less healthy and less prosperous than we were four years ago. And I think people look at that on some level and say, enough is enough. It's time to change the channel. And I, I have a hunch that that's one of the reasons why Joe Biden's poll numbers are, are as strong as they have been. People just see something different and they're ready for it. Evan Osnos, author, latest book, Joe Biden, The Life, The Run and What Matters Now. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to KGNU. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.